take for you to know that you are completely and entirely loved, then whatever that thing is, whatever it would take for you to know that, to believe that, it would be the very best news. It'd be incredibly good news for you and for me. In scripture, we see this in 1 John 4.10, tells us this, that this is love, real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. That's the gospel. That's the good news that we gather here to remember, to proclaim to one another. It's in the gospel that Jesus died for our sins, that he rose again conquering death to give us life. It's in the gospel that we encounter the love of God. We see most clearly, in fact, all of his character in the gospel and the good news in fact, the gospel, the love of God, takes our eyes off of ourselves and it fixes our eyes on the nature, the glorious nature of the one who has loved us. That's what it does. We love because he first loved us. Walker Percy was a, an American writer and a novelist, and he said that we love the ones that know the worst of us and don't turn their faces away. And that's what God has done. He knows the worst about you and about me, but he hasn't turned his face away from us. In fact, he looks at us. He's committed to us individually and as his people, as his church. And we're here to celebrate that together. When we gather, we worship him for who he is and for what he's done. And who he is, is the author of redemption. And what he's given to us is the message of redemption, the good news, the gospel. And Pastor Joel is going to be teaching us about that this morning as we continue in our time together. But we're, we want to celebrate that in the songs we sing, in the word that is preached, in the prayers that we pray together. 
We want to celebrate it together. And so welcome to all of you. I'm so glad that you are here this morning. I want to especially welcome anybody joining us for the very first time. It's a big deal to us that you would come out on a Sunday morning. We'll be here next week and would love for you to come back as well. But welcome to you. We're also uh, gathered online with many, many folks distributed all around the world from Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, to California, to Wisconsin, to Michigan, to Ohio, and everywhere in between. Welcome to those of you joining us. So glad that you're with us. We also have the church, uh, the distributed church in many different places from Ponce Inlet, uh, Austin, Texas, DeLand, San Luis, and then our Venice, Florida distributed church. Welcome to all of you. And then part of our family is at the Seminole County Correctional Facility. We are so glad that you are a part of this family. Those of you online, your web ministers for this morning uh, is Bill Geary and Nathan Clark. They would love to help you if you need anything. And so those are the guys to connect with. Again, we're glad that you are joining us and a part of this body um, this morning. Well, a couple things that I want to mention to you here in Longwood. The first is this, our hub focus, is a class that's coming up called Faith and Finances. This is a class for those who are struggling financially, the financially vulnerable. And this is for you. I would invite you to go back to the hub after, um, uh, after the service, and they can tell you more about it. You can find more information in your uh, worship guide as well. But this is a class to help you with your finances, to help you um, to restore that part of your life. And so would invite you after the service to go back to the hub. But we're also looking for folks to walk alongside of those who are going, in, or going through that class, and we're looking for some allies. So if that's you, I'd inv invite you to go back to the hub after the service as well and uh, to, to be a part of that. Next thing that I wanted to notice is this is our first 11 a.m. service that we have our hearing impaired ministry with us, and so welcome to you all. We're so glad 11 a.m. is the best service. You just need to know that. Uh, they were at the 9 a.m., but we've moved that to the, to the 11 a.m., and so we wanted you all to know that as well. Well, before we continue, I do want to remind you that we are in this season called Lent. Lent is something that the church has observed for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's the time that leads up to Easter. And when we observe it as the church, we remember the mission of Jesus. And his mission is redemption. That's what is summarized in the gospel. That's what the good news is all about. And the gospel, the reason we're focusing on it today is because it is the epicenter for those who are disciples, for those who are becoming disciples of Jesus. We don't hear the gospel and then move on from it. One pastor has said it's not just the ABCs of the Christian life, but it is the A through Z. It is something we come back to again and again because in it what we find is the very character and heart of God. And so we want to remind each other of the good news. And one way the church has done that through the season of Lent is through certain scriptures that we'll read together. And we want to do that together. And we're going to begin our time reading through Romans 1 responsively. And so would you stand? And let's read this responsively. I'll begin and then we'll respond together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Father, give us faith to believe the good news of Christ. God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. Father, have mercy on us through Christ our Lord. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. Father, have mercy on us through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. you continue to pray with me our great heavenly father we are gathered in all of these places from all around the world from Kenya to the United Kingdom to California to Ohio to right here in Florida we're gathered in all of these places for one purpose and one goal and it is to bring glory to your name to honor you with our lives to honor you with all that we have. And so that's why we're here, but we're here mostly because you have drawn us here. You have drawn us to yourself as your people, and you did it through the good news, the gospel, by sending your son to die our death. And upon that cross is where you displayed the greatness of your glory. It's on that cross that we see your righteousness, your holiness, your justice. And it's on that cross that we see your mercy, your kindness, and your everlasting love. And it's because of that that we are here. You have redeemed us. And you have redeemed us so that we could be with you but also that we might be able to reflect that love, that kindness back into the world that needs that kind of love. And so we ask that you would conform us more and more into the image of Jesus. We need your help to do that. We need your spirit to do that. And so we ask that you would in this time lead us to that end. We pray that you would use your word in a powerful way this morning so that we would be more like you, so that we would love more like you. And so we give to you this morning our songs of worship, we give to you our prayers, we give to you our tithes and offerings, and we give to you our very hearts. Would they be yours? And would you use them to further your kingdom? That is our prayer this morning. And so now continue to lead us in all of these things. We pray all these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Before you sit down, one more thing. Many of you may have noticed we haven't had a chance to greet one another. Some of you are deeply disappointed about that. Some of you not so much. Well, here's what we wanna do. It's what the church has done for a very long time. They have passed the peace of Christ to one another because the good news of the gospel brings peace between us and God, but it also brings peace among us as the church. And so we wanna greet each other by saying, peace be with you. And so right now, before you sit down, would you turn to those around you and say those words, peace be with you. You may be seated. The best idea we have of God, and therefore the best idea we have of the church that should be built after the nature of God in His image is I am equals or is best seen as us for them there. We have established that we are going to build a church modeled after the nature of God because that is the 
most powerful, the most personal, and the most pervasive form of the church. Christ will build his church against which the gates of hell will not prevail. We're in the hell busting business. Hell is anything that wants to keep you away from God. So what do we do? Well, there's a basic building block, basic building block of building the church. And it's this simple, make disciples. Make disciples. And to that, we're going to dedicate ourselves. I've told you before, and I believe this because of the nature of God and because of his word, that God wants you to enter into the best season you've ever had in your life. But that will not come if you keep living the same life over and over again. Something has to change in your life. You, you must become more immersed in the nature of God. You must prioritize God more than you ever have. Prioritize him with every facet of your life. Prioritizing him in your giving, in your, in your money. If you don't, you haven't prioritized him. Prioritize him in your, in your time. If you don't, you haven't prioritized him and your, your life won't get any better. If, if, prioritize him in, in your relationships. Prioritize him. Now the way we know to do that is to be trained, actually trained in discipleship. And so for the next two or three years, we're going to go lesson by lesson. And, 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 and we followed a, we're following a curriculum. It's a, it's a default curriculum, all right? And this is the curriculum. You can, we have them available in our bookstore. You can buy the book. Don't buy the book. I don't care. But we're going to go through this. Now, this also is the curriculum around which you can gather your relationships. And as I begin to unfold this curriculum in our midst, we will archive these, these messages. So whenever you decide, you know, I, I've got a few people I'd like, to, I'd like to go through this with. So that you're not only becoming a disciple, you're making disciples. You'll have an example of how to do this. All right? Now, the whole key is we focus on scripture together. This is not about somebody knowing more about anybody else. Our common focus is the scripture. That's exactly how these lessons unfold. Let me show you an example. Let's, let's take the very first lesson. That's what we're in today. And I'm going to read a scripture to you. This is the text for today. This scripture is also in your bulletin. And if you're here, if you've got a worship, if you got a worship bulletin, you can pull it out. I'm going to read through this scripture. Now, I want to tell you, I want to warn you. At the end of this scripture, there's going to be a quiz. There is. There is. I'm going to ask, just like we do in our groups, when we have a group in our home. We read through the scripture, and the leader simply says, what do you see in that scripture? What are the points, what are the main messages of that scripture? And then the group is the one who pulls out from that scripture what the leader doesn't have to teach. Dis disciples are, 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 are people who share with each other. Um, and, so, and so, hi, Lori. Okay, good. Um, Lori's going to help us after, we, after I get done with scripture. I saw somebody walking back there. Look at him go, hey, who is that? It's Lori. Um, and, 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 so, and so I'm going to go through this, and then I'm going to do what, what if you pull a few friends together so that the, the pressure is not on you to teach about the scripture. It's just... What do we see in the scripture? We want to model that for you. Okay? Okay. You. I'm going to read it from, by the way, I'm going to, I, I want you to start bringing scriptures with you besides just what you have in your bulletin. If you want to bring the personal, uh, personal devices because you've got the Bible on there, that's fine. But let me, do, <laughs> let me just give you a little, let me tell you why paper's better. Because, because I, I just want to tell you this. I, I want you to start actually bringing a Bible. And I'll tell you why. I, just a very practical reason. It kind of reminds me of a, of a, of a story uh, about uh, this older couple walking through the mall and they were holding hands, you know. And, and somebody came up to him and said, that is so romantic. 
And the, and the, and the gentleman looked at, at, at the person who had said that and said, oh yeah, I've been, every time we go to the store, you know, uh, I, I hold her hand for 50 years. I've been holding her hand. And the, and the person said, how sweet. But he wistfully continued, I've got to. Because every time I let go, she goes shopping. <laughs> Can I just say something about personal devices? If, if, if you get bored, you're going to go shopping. You know, you're going to I got to check my email, okay? That's why, that's why paper is good. All right, because you'll, because I will be boring. I got to tell you, you know that, you know, that. don't shake, you don't do that. <laughs> but let me, let me read this scripture. All Joel, right. Before you do that, do you want to tell the folks online while you're reading how they can participate with that address? Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes. Um, go to discuss at northland.net. Does that, is that where the scripture is yeah. online? Yes. And they can also type their, um, dis- their answers in there. Thank you. And you can type in what she said. <laughs> you can type your answers in there. See, we're a team here. All right. So you, you can go to uh, discuss at northlandchurch.net and, uh, and, and, and you will see the scripture. And you can type, type your, when I ask you, what did you see in that? What do you think the elements of this message are? You can type your answer and we can share it, okay? All right, let me read. This is from verse 34, Acts chapter 10. Opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality, but in every nation, the man and woman who fears him and does what is right is welcome to him. The word which he sent to the sons of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You yourselves know the thing which took place throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee, after the baptism which John proclaimed. You know of Jesus of Nazareth how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all of the things he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. God raised him up on the third day and granted that he become visible, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen beforehand by God, that is, to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach to the people and solemnly to testify that this is the one who has been appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. Of him all the prophets bear witness through his name that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Now I'm going to stop right there. There's more, but I'm going to stop right there. And I'm just going to ask you, just if you're in this room or if you're online, just raise your hand and just tell me what are the elements of the content that you see in the passage that I just read? What are some of the important elements that you see? Just raise your hand. Okay? Do we have a mic in this area over here? Where are our microphones? Come on. We need you down yeah, here. Yeah, Mo- Melissa is going to go in that direction. Okay. Right, turn right. No, no. <laughs> right up there. Raise your hand, please. Thank you. There you go. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. My name is Betsy. Thank I you. see the whole plan of salvation. I see... God's sacrifice, and if you read that, I don't know how you could not accept him for who he is and what he's done for us. Okay, now what Betsy has done is given us a good summary of what the message is. Here's what I want the rest of you to do. Actually pull out segments that you read there so that you can be repeating to us what God's word actually is saying, okay? That's, that's, it's, it's really, I'm getting to where Betsy, Betsy's an uh, overachiever. She, yeah. she, got to, she got to where we're going, okay? But, but I, I, here's, what, here's what's important. What's important is that people 
be able to read scripture for themselves, understand it, pull it out and repeat it for themselves. That's what trains up disciples. So what, who can tell us, uh, reading from scripture, go ahead. Melissa's mic. Um, the first thing that I noticed is um, God does not show partiality. All are welcome. Good, good, good. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit, but thank you. That's exactly right. And then Bethany's mic. Um, I was the same thing that she's seen. That's what I saw. That God did didn't show partism among everybody. That He wanted His word to go forth to every nation. Great. That's what I saw. Great. Thank you, Sue Ann. Who else? It seems very elementary, but it's not. It's very important. Bill, do you have someone? Yes. We'll go to Bill's mic. I also see here that um, he says that they knew about Jesus and what he had done. So it was a public ministry that everyone was witness to it at the time when he was there. Very good. Yeah. Good. Great. Back to Melissa's mic. Hi, Pastor. My name's John. Um, God does not show partiality. But then we get hit with this one. He became visible not to all the people but to witnesses who were chosen beforehand by God. I don't get it. After his resurrection. After mm -hmm. his resurrection. That's the important part of that, but that's good. What John just did, this is so important for, the, for your friends to, to gather and to be able to read what they say and then to say, I don't get it. That is so valuable. And because you've got to create a safe space and you've got to feel safe when you look at something in Scripture and go, I don't get it. This is great. This is how disciples are made. Uh, we're going to go up into the mezzanine to Terry's mic. Hi, my name is V. And based on what I'm see, uh, I read from, your, uh, from the prayer, is that God gave Jesus a lot of power over us. And as humans, we, sometimes we have certain powers. He learned, instead of abusing it, he learns to heal. Mm -hmm. And Thank for you. that only, I will pray him every day. Thank you. Thank you. Who uh, else? Let's go over to Jeff. Hi. I recently lost my mom in June of last year. And I was with a, a man for a long time. And now I have to leave him behind to have a future of my own. And I'm scared. Um, I'm frightened, right, Pastor, and I've been coming regularly, pretty regularly, for a couple of months now. When does a person heal from a death and a loss of a very special friend? Over a long period of time. Uh, let me just take a break from what we're doing right now because we've had another subject introduced here. Um, and again, as you're gathering friends, this is what's going to happen. This is a very realistic thing. The question is a legitimate one, and, and it's something I know something about. The, the, the pain really, somebody once told me, the pain doesn't ever go away. You just get bigger around it. And so there will always be a spot with which you miss that person. But God has more for you. And, and so we want you to, to have the fellowship of others who will encourage you and sustain you through this time so that you really can have what you need to go forward. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, let me uh, take one from online. Um, Maria writes that what she sees in this scripture is that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Great. Um, let me see. We have, Melissa, did you have someone? Right down front here. You know, what landed for me here was that you've got somebody that gave the most important thing that was to him to somebody else to be sacrificed, that, that he cared that much. And, and I think that transcends for me through, through this right here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jeff's mic. Uh, 
Um, what stuck out to me was he ordered us to preach to the people and to solemnly testify. So once we've witnessed, we should then share that with others. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Jeff has another one, I think. Same. No? Oh, same, same uh -huh. one. Okay. Bethany? What I got was that if someone's witnessed to you, you can trace that back through the ages to someone who has wit personally witnessed Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And Bill's mic. Yes, one of the things I took from it when I look in here, it's at the end of the sentence where it says, for God was with him. And even though he is the son of Christ that came down for our sins and he knew he was, it makes a point of saying that and God was with him. That's really good. Yeah, that's really good. All right. Um, Melissa. I took away from it that baptism is the beginning of everything. Baptisms, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a lesson on baptism in two weeks. So I want you to, baptism is, a part, is an entry, as you will see, into a new community. But before you're baptized, you must believe. So, so it's really, it really kind of goes like this. The Holy Spirit prepares you to believe Somebody delivers the truth. You place your faith in the person of that truth, who is Jesus Christ. Then you're baptized. But in a way, baptism is the beginning of your new community. So that's true. Shall we take a couple more, Pastor? Uh, yeah, just a couple more. Okay, Bill's mic. Uh, hi, Pastor. My hi. name's Nick. Hey, Nick. Uh, one of the things that stuck out was the last sentence of him, all prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, Amen. Uh, I also have a question for you. I have someone in my life who's very emotionally unstable. And if you don't know how they're going to react to something, what exactly do you do? Well... You do what you ordinarily do and prepare yourself for any, <laughs> any menu of, of, of reaction. Um, it's, it, it, sometimes you can gauge if, if somebody's a little bit in a little bit better place, um, then, then you can present uh, something. Uh, if, they're, if they're going through a really rough time and they're really emotional, they got no reserve, it's probably just a time to listen to them. So try to pay attention to where they are at the moment. Uh, but we're never sure of how people are going to react when we say anything, especially people who, who you, know, um, you know, are kind of up and down on a roller coaster anyhow. So you just got to love them like they are. You got to say what you need to in the smartest spots that you can, <clears throat> and then just live out the consequences. <laughs> Stick right. with them no matter what. Okay, one more. This will be our last one. This is Bethany's mic. Hi, Pastor Joe. How you doing? I really love enjoying and reading verses 39 and 40 in this particular scripture. And we are witnesses of all things which he had did, both in the land of the Jews and Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree, whom God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. To me, the witness that is given through actual people who saw the events taking place is so building my faith. It's just showing forth the truth of the gospel. And then it ends leading that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation. So, uh, you know, I just see the truth of the gospel bearing witness through the witnesses that I could take it as truth today. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just make an observation here? When you are, are, are trying to focus on scripture, there will be many people around you who want to focus on scripture, but they will have something in their life that is so uh, present 
um, that they, they kind of need to deal with this while they're, dealing, that while they're focusing on Scripture. In other words, not all life is a tabla rosa, it's a blank, blank slate. Uh, and so what we've heard this morning is people bring their relationships into this. People bring their pain into this. And sometimes you, you just need to speak to that while continuing to go back to the passage. It's just part of walking with someone, like Jesus walked with us. And so that's, that's all part of having a relationship and not just a pure deductive Bible study, okay? Because sp spiritual relationship is not about pure content. Um, it's about the whole person. But it ultimately has to end up coming back to this, and I'll tell you why. Because this is our standard for all belief and conduct. And the reason why we want to talk about this and focus on this, which is who God is as revealed by God through his word, is because people will still see things here that we don't see. That's why it's better than just reading the Bible personally with a bunch of commentaries. Because if you have a group and they're, they're saying, this is what I see in there, you come out with a much richer understanding of what God would say to you because you may have missed something that somebody else sees. So, but let me tell you where we're going today with the remaining time. The, the, the essence of being built up in discipleship a disciple is someone, remember, who has placed their trust in Christ, who is growing into his likeness, and who is serving in his power for his purposes. All right? Now, if we are being built in discipleship, there are certain elements, certain non-negotiables that need to be in place. And the first one is this. We keep hearing about this word gospel or the good news. What exactly is that? If we say we're ministers of the gospel or I'm not ashamed of the gospel, what exactly is that? In other words, if somebody will listen to you, what are you gonna to say to them? What's the basic message? That every Christian ought to be able to talk about Jesus Christ and who he is and what he's done. There was a lady uh, on Monday nights, you know, it, it takes me till Monday to, to really actually know what God's trying to say. So Monday nights before the sermon, I, I, I come out and I hug people and, and, and uh, a little bit more relaxed than, than other times. And, and, uh, and there was this lady on a walker. She always sits back in this section and she's got to be 70, 80 years old. And, and so she said, hey, I want to ask you a question. And I said, okay. She said, when I talk to people, a lot of times I say, do you know the Lord? And I said, well, that's good. She said, and, and sometimes though people, people will say no. And I'll say, huh. She said, so here's my question. What do I say then? <laughs> Isn't that the question? If you have an opening, what do you say? If somebody says, okay, Tell me about this, Jesus. Tell me what you believe. What do you say? This was Peter's summary to a non-believer. Now, the reason I, I, I want you to bring your Bibles is because in a lot of these, in order to understand the passage we're going to go through, you've got to understand a little bit of the background. So the 10th chapter of Acts, and, 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 and we can just read through this. Uh, um, you can read through it. Uh, I'll just kind of summarize it. It opens up with a person who is a them. He's not a part of the Christian fellowship. He's a devout man. His name is Cornelius. He's a devout man. He fears God. He's a good man, uh, in as much as any person can be good. You know these folks. You know people who aren't Christians, who are devout, who fear God, who believe in God. They're basically good people. You know them, but they're not yet included into us. And so, Cornelius gets this message from God. By the way, God can speak to anyone. God can't only speak to Christians. 
This guy wasn't a Christian. And an angel of the Lord came to him and said, I want you to send some folks to Joppa. Because I got, a, I got a guy there I want you to talk to. So he said, okay. Now at this same time, Peter is at Joppa. He's, 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 he's smelling food. He's, it's, hung, it's about supper time. He goes up, he goes up at the, on, on the roof. He's hungry, remember. And he has a vision. And the vision is this sheet full of animals, many of who are unclean. And this voice says, kill and eat. And Peter says back to the voice, I have never eaten anything unclean in my life and I'm not about to, eat. you know, you got this attitude. I'm not about to eat anything unclean now. And the voice comes back and says, don't call unclean what I have called clean. In other words, you got to get rid of your prejudices. You've got some categories I don't have. And you've got to go beyond your, own, your old categories. About that time, somebody's at the door. He says, hey, there's somebody at the door for you. Go down and answer. So he goes down there, and there's this guy from Cornelius. They said, we want you to come with us. And so they go, and, and they walk into Cornelius' house. Now, Cornelius is a powerful military guy. Military leader, big, big, big shot. And Cornelius knows Peter's from God, falls down and starts to worship him. And Peter said, what are you doing? I'm a man just like you are. But I had this experience with God. And Cornelius said, well, I had this experience with God. And Cornelius says, here we all are. Tell us what you need to tell us. This is called the kerygma, the, popu the, the proclamation. This is the message. This is a summary of the message. And this is what we ought to be able to tell other people. All right, I'm going to just give you the elements of it as I, as I kind of pulled some of them out. You can use all of them, but you need to use a few of them. You don't need to use all of them every time, but you need to use a few of them, okay? The first point of what he says and by the way, I want, you to, I want you to remember the lead up because it's the lead up to every conversation about God you'll have. I want you to know this. Before you ever got in that conversation, God was working in their life. You're not introducing God to them. God's been there, all right? He's already been working in their life. He's been working in your life. And so as, as old Methodists, we used to call this provenient grace. You don't introduce God to anybody. God's already made them. He's already working in their life because God so loved the world and God shows no partiality. So God's already been speaking in their life. They're in a, in, at a certain level, they're ready to hear what you, have to, what you have to say. Their first reaction may not be the best, but they're ready to hear it, okay? Second, I want you to understand that you've got to drop your prejudices as to who's ready and who's not and who should hear it and who should stop it. God doesn't have those categories. Third, I want you to understand that, it, that, that it, it starts out with sharing your life. Starts out with sharing your life. Peter said, don't look to me for the answers. I didn't come to, I, I just came to share part of my journey with God, with you. And I want you to share part of your journey with God with me. Let's share lives, okay? And we'll walk with God together. We'll get closer to God together. Now, here are the elements, this, this, the, the basic elements of, of the proclamation that, that are in this. Number one, Jesus is God's long-awaited gift for the whole world. This is in verses 34 through 36. That, he, that, 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 that Jesus is not just the Christian God. That Jesus is the answer to what everyone has been waiting on, including the person you're talking to. Jesus is the one whom you have been waiting, the relationship with God whom you have been waiting for in your life. Number two, I want you to know the next, I'm going to go through these, these uh, rather rapidly. Jesus had a ministry of healing and helping people. That is, Jesus' ministry wasn't just a spiritual one, it was a practical one. 
And those of us who follow Jesus will not just have a spiritual message, we will have a practical service. And so as you are speaking with these folks, I want you to understand, I want them to understand you're there to help them. You're not just there to convert them to your way of theology. You're at their service because that's who our Lord was. He came down, his, his presence was healing. He fed the hungry. He went to the lonely. And so, and so, and, and so that's who we are. That's what a disciple is. Number three, he was killed, hung on a cross, crucified, and he was resurrected. And I want you to be able to say, this was God's son, God's word in the world, who was crucified, <coughs> excuse me, and, 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 and who was resurrected. Because later on, you won't, tell, you won't tell them the whole story just right in that setting. You don't need to stop and explain the different theories of atonement um, and, and so on and so forth. But here's what they need to understand. That we had a sin problem. And that has to do with Jesus going to the cross to pay for our sins. But death could not conquer him. He has a resurrected life that his followers also have. Death cannot conquer us. As a matter of fact, we are more than conquerors in anything that would threaten our death. Uh, any aspect of life, anything that knocks us down, anything that kills us, we will get back up from because we have that eternal life in our life. Next. Not everybody sees him. He is a living presence to those who believe. This is what people have to know. That Jesus isn't just a belief. He's not just a concept. He's not just a historical study. What's this? Jesus is a living presence to those who walk with him and have been trained to walk with him daily. We see him working. We hear his voice. Yesterday, I was at a men's group, um, um, and A.C. Green was talking. Some of you know A.C. Green. He's the Iron Man of the NBA. This guy, when he, during his career, played like 1,140-some games, just one after another, never missed a game. The Iron Man, you know? He was also famous, by the way, for being so devoted to Jesus Christ that he lived his entire life until he got married, even as an, a, a, a person who was in the NBA who had, had cheerleaders thrown at him the whole time. He was a virgin until he got married as a witness to Jesus Christ. So this guy is somebody who walks the walk. But he was talking about playing for the, um, the Lakers. And he was talking about playing with Kobe and Shaq and, 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 and playing under the, under the tutelage of, of Phil Jackson. He said, Phil, Phil Jackson was kind of a funny coach. He said he never got upset like, the, like other coaches do. He never stood and yelled and yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he never did that. You know, he's just like. But he said he trained us that when he whistled, our ears picked up that whistle. And we could glance over and in a moment get guidance we needed. Know what we needed to do next. He said, now you have to understand this. There are 20, 40, 1,000 people, 20 or 30, 1,000 people in an arena who are all yelling while he's whistling. They can't hear him. Every member of our team hears it instantly because we've been trained to hear it. That's the way it is with followers of Jesus Christ. That's the way it is with people who have been trained in discipleship. Christ isn't some belief that you, that you, he's an actual presence. And lastly, he is the judge and the forgiveness of all who trust in him. 
The Bible says believe in him, but the Greek is, is pistos. It's not an intellectual belief. Yes, I believe Jesus existed. The demons believe Jesus existed and that he was the son of God. No, who trust in them, him for their salvation. And so what have we got? We've got the proclamation. When somebody says, so what do you want to tell me? We've got this. I want you to know about Jesus, who is the Lord that everyone was waiting on. And the Lord all the world is waiting on right now. I want you to know that he walked among us just as his followers do for healing and for help. It wasn't just a spiritual thing, it's a practical thing. And I wanna be of assistance to you in ways that are practical to you. I want you to know that he was crucified because somehow our sins couldn't be paid for by us. They had to be paid for by him. And somehow, in ways that I wanna follow up and tell you if you're interested, it broke the power of sin. Sin is what ruins our lives. It broke that power because he was resurrected on the third day. He didn't die. He came back to walk with us forever. And those of us who follow him know him in our daily life. We see his work, we hear his words, we feel his guidance. He's an active living presence in us because he wants you to know that in him is the forgiveness for your sins. Now at the end of that, it may be time to say, so do you wanna trust in him? It may be something that, that they say, well, not yet, let me, I've got a few more questions. That's all right. But that's the gospel. That's the good news. That God sent exactly who we needed to be who we are in this world, to pay for our sins, to walk with us, and to offer this gift to other people. That's the proclamation. And now you know. And now you know. I'm going to pray for us. And I'm going to say in this prayer, a, pray, a part of what I've just, what I've just said to you in, in this, in this um, um, kerugma, in this proclamation, in this basic message, in this gospel, all right, that we need to be able to tell other people. That's why we're still here. Remember, we're here for them. So that's why we're still here. But I want you to know as I pray this, I don't pray this to convince anybody. Because what's the last part of this section that we didn't go through today? The last part of this is the Holy Spirit was the one who brought that message home. You don't need to convince anybody about the truth of this message. The Holy Spirit does that. You present it, Step back, and the Spirit will work. It's not up to you. They were so enthusiastic, they wanted to be baptized in a moment. Peter said, great, baptize them. By the way, I want you to know, Peter didn't have to baptize them. The believers baptized them. Any believer can baptize anybody. It's one of the things we want you to know. <clears throat> you don't need to go get a preacher. If somebody's ready to be baptized, you who believe have Jesus Christ in you, you baptize them on the spot. And that, that's all the authority you need. Okay? Again, we'll, te we'll teach you how to do this as we go along. But the point is the Holy Spirit worked. Okay? So I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray the elements of this. And those of you who may not have trusted in Christ before, if you want to trust in him right now, trust him right now. And you will be saved. You will be forgiven. Pray with me. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for the message that Peter passed on to us and, and that we pass on to, for others. That 
Jesus is your gift to the world, the one we waited for, the one we longed for. Thank you that he walked among us, healing and helping people. Make us those kinds of people too. Thank you that he was crucified to pay for our sins and to break the power of sin in our life because he was also resurrected so that sin would not have the last word. Sin would not do the most damage. The power of life, your life, eternal life, overcame the power of sin. Thank you that he is with us now and those of us who believe and those who walk with him are aware of his living presence every day. Lord, make us more and more aware. And thank you that all who trust in him are forgiven of their sins. Lord, anyone who has not trusted in you before, let them do it right now, Jesus. Let them say, Lord, I trust in you for the forgiveness of my sins. Come into my life as the living presence who will make of my life whatever you want. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you said that prayer, you're part of us. You're part of the redeemed community that will live forever, but doesn't have to die in order to have the power of eternal life now. And so I want you to keep coming and keep being built up in your discipleship and learn how you can make disciples in the relationships you have with people who will never set foot in, in, in the building of a church. We'll go out and build a church around them. Those of you who are online, I want you to know you are the church distributed now. We're talking about it in here, but de facto, you are the, it's, when you worship online, listen, according to the distributed church, that's not a secondary experience, that's a pioneering position. And so those of you who are worshiping with, from, uh, with us from jail right now, build a church where you are. God is authorizing you to build a church where you are, to disciple people where you are. Stick with us. We'll teach you how. And all the rest of us, when you go out this week, I want you to know Jesus goes with you. Look for an opening that you can deliver a message that people need to hear. Please, everybody stand for the benediction. Remember, uh, those of you in this building, um, you're going to have uh, the hub focus is faith and finances. If you're going through a difficult uh, time financially right now, let us help you understand God's principles of finances. Um, and, 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 and we would love to do that. In every gathering, we have a prayer team, and, and we have one in Longwood, too. If you have a burden that you want to share, we bear one another's burdens. That's what the Bible says to do. Uh, if you need prayer for healing, we have James 5 prayer here. We anoint. The elders anoint with oil. We've seen healing after healing. And so come forward and, and let the, the elders anoint you with oil. But let's go this week understanding we are disciples of Jesus Christ. He is our identity. He is our power. He is our purpose. And where he leads us is no accident. Amen.